Hi everybody, Carol here. I took some time off to do some thinking and reflecting, so I'm welcoming myself back. <laughs> but mostly, I'm wel welcoming you to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be making a shadow box card with a 5x11 strip of paper. I take it to the scoreboard and make the first score at the 7.5 mark. Everything after that is half inch increments. I do flip the paper back and forth and I do one inch on one side and then uh, move over a half inch and do the other one inch marks. That just makes it easier to make this fold, accordion fold. These are the measurements that I use. You certainly don't have to do the same, but uh, you could take a screenshot or um, write the numbers down if you want to. And uh, there are two ways of doing this. You could make both of these pieces and cut out a window on one of them, or you could do what I'm doing today and just make an extra side piece with the folds and two strips of paper for the frame at the top and the bottom. And uh, you'll see it more as we go along. Now the stamp set I'm using is an old Stampin' Up! stamp set called Under the Stars. It's still available on eBay, Stamping Up! I checked. And uh, so if you like this stamp set, um, I'm showing that I stamped it off on white paper and cut some of those out. But now I'm going to also do some paper piecing on colored paper. For example, I'll cut the bear out on brown and tan and paper piece them together, which you will see. And um, this is a little s'mores and then a raccoon in gray and um, so forth and so on, a bedroll on red, and um, we'll see which one we like better, whether the white colored with Prisma colors or this on colored paper. And I'm cutting out his uh, face and, and tummy to go on the brown. And I'm just showing you that out of all these uh, little pieces, that I stamped, like the cans, there are a couple of cans that have labels. So I stamped them on two different colors so that I could cut the labels out. Uh, things like that. Now, the bear, I did cut him out and I cut out his little uh, muzzle, <laughs> is that what you call it, snout, <laughs> and his belly. And that's what it'll look like, paper pieced the s'mores. I cut the marshmallow out of white and I'll glue them together and go back and color the chocolate later. And then here's one of the cans with a yellow label. Of course I also had it yellow with the orange label. You could do it, you know, and I did. I played to see um, which colors I liked better. There's kind of a, a darker, more pumpkin color. Um, there's a little can of beans that was stuck on a stick to put over the fire. I'm not quite sure how they did that, but <laughs> anyway, so there's a can of beans with a different colored label. Um, so, um, you can play around with it. The red, I could have gone back and darkened and shaded the red with Prisma colors, but that one turned out just fine. And then the raccoon in gray. There's the stick in black, and that's what the can of beans will look like on there. And um, then the compass in gray to kind of represent silver and the mosquito. So I'll show you what it looks like on white when I cut these out. And they will probably get used in another project and color them up. Could be very cute. So uh, I did take a Conte white drawing pencil and just made some highlights on the silver that's C-O-N-T-E and I used uh, the Millennium pens to further darken his nose and uh, the raccoon's mask and his tail stripe and uh, just to make it a little darker and 
And so there's the comparison of the two. Now, I paper clipped that together to keep the pleats better. This is showing how this will go together. I'm going to make a piece of sky all the way to the ground because this will uh, be layered. I drew some heels on this tan paper. Just sketched them out and uh, cutting them out. I will trim this down some more, but just to get the idea. And you will see how they fit in the pleats and that gives them dimension and casts a shadow. I also go over the heels with a makeup sponge and some uh, neutral ink uh, so that you will be able to distinguish between the two heels and actually see them. Uh, when I start to put this together, I will put some glue on that back half inch uh, of the second set of folds I got. And then I'll show you how um, I put the glue around the edge of that and I'll put it together. I use Tombow glue and it's repositionable. Now I want to show how these fit in these pleats. You can do it any way you want to. I decided to put the glue on the front of the brown paper and attach it to the back of a pleat. And this is Tombow glue. I'm showing it is repositionable. If you let it dry, then you can put the uh, paper down, pull it up, put it down, pull it up. It's repositionable and it comes in really handy on doing something like this because there are some little twists and tweets to get those um, folds to, to work, you know, just the way you want them. Now some of these need special gluing in special places. I'm showing how I cut the top of that can off on that stick uh, so that I can glue the can of beans down. But anyway, uh, for example, the mosquito here. My idea is that I want him to just hang off the edge of the frame. So I want to be careful to only get glue on that part of the wing, or wings. So you, you know you need to figure out where you're going to put things first before you start applying the glue. And um, because the whole idea is for dimension on this card and you don't want it all stuck together flat. So um, the same way with the little can here, it's going to go on that stick. I left part of the can in white so that I'd know where to place it. So I just want a little bit of glue down on the bottom of that and you'll see it in a minute when I actually put it together. Um, with the s'mores, I move it around some so I thought I'm just going to be safe and just put it on the bottom. This is good glue. It'll hold just a little bit. The raccoon, I know I want it on the frame, so I'm just going to put glue on his feet. The bear, I know him, I know that I want him stuck up, up above the hill, so I'm only going to put glue on his feet. Now there was a little cloud off to the side and I'll show I've used this old stamp set called Wishing You Were Here by stamping up again. I love those clouds and I've used them over and over again and I stamped them out and cut them out uh, and they just make good clouds. I'll show you what it looks like on this blue paper. And So I'm going to put some glue on it and then I'll also have to put some glue on the top and bottom corners of this accordion because that's where my little frame strips are going to go. So I will set that aside to dry. Now I'll start putting it all together. I had these clipped and with some uh, extra little scraps of paper so it wouldn't dent the paper. And that just helps them to get that uh, shape retained in there. Uh, the blue paper does, I do want it all the way to the bottom in case you lift the card up and you can see all the way down to the bottom. Now here comes the um, first heel and I'm showing that I'm bringing it in one pleat. Now you see it's not uh, lying flat or straight so that's why I could pull that up and straighten it up a little bit with that repositionable glue. Now then, now that it's nice and straight and you can see the dimension. The next one I'll do the same thing attaching the front of the brown to the back of the pleat and these are one pleat apart. 
they don't have to be they'd be two pleats apart and you could glue the back of the brown to the top of the pleat it's just you know play around with it what you like i do it different ways different days the beauty of it is that you've got these pleats to work with now i'm going to um put the bottom strip on there now this is an exact measure of the seven inches i do go back and cut that seven and a half down to seven uh, just trimmed off a half inch and I wanted a true five by seven card so anyway so here uh, it looks good now but see when I stand it up you'll see that bows out a little bit so I go back you'll see later I go back and tweak that and pull that a little tighter that frame piece and I'll put the top one on later but I've got to put my things in the sky and uh, I'm getting into my surrealism here <laughs> I'm putting the compass in the sky and the bedroll in the sky. Uh, I figure we can do things like this when we're making art, right? I do uh, do another arrangement at the very end. You'll see some still shots of another arrangement where I move that bedroll somewhere else. Uh, and there's the little skeeter. Uh, and the other one, I put the skeeter in the sky so you can see which one you like better. But... Um, and then here we come with the skeeter spray. I decided to move that over and I'm going to put my cloud in the sky and then I think you know I better put that top frame strip across there and see if that's going to block the view so you kind of have to work with that too it's absolutely no big deal to move something over a eighth of an inch but um, anyway so here comes um, the s'more and I do move it uh, around a little bit as you'll see I tweak it there's the stick and with this little half of a white can so that I can easily place the colored can so in all in all it ends up being a fairly colorful card which I like that and I don't know that and I'm showing you that part of the white that I cut off that's where it would have been um, there's a bear with just his feet so I'm not sticking the card all together by having glue on his head if you get what I mean and the same thing with the raccoon just the glue on his feet uh, so we had that dimension between the frame and the first hill but anyway, I was just going to say, I think that I got more color with this than I would have with the Prismacolor. But sometimes you might want a more subtle look, a uh, more subtle color. So there's the great sentiment. Tweaking things around a little bit. I decided to move the s'mores. Actually, it's kind of fun to start just playing with things because doesn't really look bad anyway any any place you put it within reason of course <laughs> but uh, anyway so I start um, pulling those uh, frame pieces top and bottom a little tighter and you'll see that but right now I'm going to pull in my Prisma colors and color that chocolate um, that was my intention the whole time but I just uh, put it off till now and that certainly makes it look more like a s'more. Now you can see where I have pulled those tabs, top and bottom, a little tighter. It makes a little straighter edge for some reason. So I'll cut them off. And there you have it. And I wanted to show that you could write a sentiment a sentiment on the back or you could uh, just attach a little note folded up for privacy to the back so you can see the shadows uh, you can see them there and there are the pleats it is an accordion shadow box card self-explanatory <laughs> and then uh, I almost didn't do this card because I wasn't sure 
but I really like it and I'm glad I'm glad that I did. I wanted to show that if you wanted to mail this, you might want a belly band around it to uh, squish it up a little bit so that it fit better in the envelope. So I just took a strip of paper, found the center, went out three and a half inches on either side for my score marks. So I'd have a solid seven inches across the back. For the sides, another score, and I did a fourth of an inch, an eighth of an inch would have been fine because it squashes down that good. And there's my little, I made a little tag. I just put the pieces, the ends of the card together, punched some holes, uh, uh, punched at the same time. I thought the raffia really fit the theme. And then the tag, you are great to pick up on that same sentiment. Uh, great. And um, they can slide it off or they can untie it. Now here's an A7 envelope. I just want to show you that it fits in there. Do you need to be a little careful? You don't want to knock knock off any uh, mosquito parts or spray can parts and <laughs> so and I could have squashed it down in there a little better um, but just to give you uh, the idea and that's how it is and it is totally mailable and I think that'll be a surprise so I hope you enjoyed it I really got a kick out of making this card uh, more than I thought I would and so you never sometimes you don't know till you really get into something so uh, That shows the accordion with the dimension the definite dimension Really more fun than a flat card a flat cards e easier But now this is not a very good picture But this is the other arrangement where I put the mosquito in the air and the other things around the frame and um, So just shows how you can play with that. I'm sure there are a lot of other things I could have done so Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time.